Hi, um, I want to cover the three basic options you have when selecting a potential supplier. And this is in the context of developing a new product. I will cover the other context of private labeling an, uh, an existing product a little bit later in the same video. So you're developing a new product. What are your options? There are two things to look at first. What are the expected sales? What is the expected production volume, right? High is here, low is here. The other axis is how much control do you need, low or high? Control is control over your IP, control over quality, and so on. What, you know, the way that they're working, um, fewer surprises. Uh, actually keeping continuity of supply not being cut off suddenly uh, pricing also visibility and stability basically not being at the mercy of this, the manufacturer okay control over the manufacturer so you want to develop a new product uh, there's basically three kinds of manufacturers generally speaking in China um, so the ODM original design manufacturer basically they already have developed some products pretty close maybe to what you want to make and it's ODM plus um, adjustment okay so you come to them and you say well I like this camera module that you made and I like with this captor and the sensors that you have but also need you to make this special thing you know it could be a little could be on on the hardware could be on the software um, here's the way to do and then maybe also you it's your own uh, packaging and, and and your own branding okay um, so basically you, you also bring in them ideas right so what what happens often is that um, they will use it and resell it to their other customers or directly to your customers or, or, or whatever which is why if you want high control you definitely at one point you say no I really cannot work with an ODM like that because they can cut me off at any time and they have all the intellectual property basically because it's based on their own product right um, we need more control but still with relatively low to medium expected volume go to the OEM Okay, so OEM, an OEM manufacturer will have to develop, right? Um, sometimes from scratch, even though they have expertise in that product category, they know where to source the components, they, they're already familiar more or less with the technology and with the, maybe the compliance requirements and so on, right? But they still need to develop from scratch. Um, and 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 you can have a good um, manufacturing agreement usually uh, they would be more inclined to uh, to sign that and a development agreement and then a manufacturing agreement whereas the ODM um, would say what you know all kinds of contract and blah 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 you know forget it except if it's very high volume uh, very high volume but then if it's very high volume it makes less sense to do it with an ODM I will cover that in a minute um, so usually you can have contracts with them um, lawyers can help you with that uh, and 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 you that that's how you can have more control now again as sales um, sales and volume go up you also have more of an incentive to work with a different kind of of manufacturer the cm okay contract manufacturer contract manufacturer will also develop um, more often from scratch okay really um, okay they might not have the um, expertise in the same um, in, in, in the same universe as much as the OEM which usually has been making the same kind of product maybe it's a coffee machine maybe a toaster maybe uh, a thermal camera maybe you know can be a lot of things um, 
Uh, so more work developing from scratch, which is why it only makes sense as, as the volume gets higher. But then a contract manufacturer usually will agree with uh, with you on contract for, um, you know, you own all the IP, okay? Um, whereas for the OEM, or the intellectual property, OEM, uh, it's it's not that simple. Usually they they will um, subsidize the tooling, subsidize um, some of the engineering work and so on, which means uh, they own some of the information. If you don't charge you for something, they keep the files typically. If it's an electronic product, they will keep the... Um, um, the schematics uh, they will not tell you where the PCBA process is, is done and so on for example right the, the, the CAD drawings for mechanical drawings and so on here you own everything you can really have a, a contract with them that that is very very clear cut which gives you much more control so the more control you want you see the all the area here is for the CM because the more control you want, the more it makes sense to work with a CM because it's easy to switch. Okay, I should say easier uh, to switch away from the CM basically to another CM. Or oh, actually, uh, since you have all the 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 the, um, the drawings and the files and everything, if it's not for a new version. Can even switch to an OEM or have an OEM as a backup. Um, since anyway, you will you will have all the IP. They don't need to develop anything. It's going to be much easier for you to to negotiate something good. Okay, so uh, that's sort of a rule of thumb that we're trying to give uh, importers here. Now let's look at the other context. As I said, private labeling for an existing product, right? So here, same thing, same incident vo and volume and control. Um, people very often work with an ODM. And basically what they do is they say, this sample is nice, this design is nice, uh, let me distribute it. Basically, that's really the way it, it works uh, under my brand. Right, so you you go to them and you say I like this um, this nice widget that you have. Uh, it's nice. Is it really your design? Okay, I trust you. Uh, the problem is uh, it's not always <laughs> that simple. Um, you 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 really need uh, to double check on that if you can, because it might be the design of another one of their customers. Sometimes that other customers are also selling on your market. And then you are in a world of pain if that's the case. Uh, so, and, and, and maybe maybe it's a customer that um, even has maybe a patent on it, right? Uh, a patent applicable in, in uh, the area where you're trying to sell. Okay, so, so it comes with a risk. But if you're going in with relatively low uh, sales volume and you don't really need much control this is usually the way to go you can really start fast and get something on the market fast all right that's what for example a lot of amazon sellers do a lot of e-commerce uh, companies do uh, and then as their sales volume maybe goes up on one or two of these uh, these products or maybe they realize that They've been cut off two times already. It's not good, and 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 some of the OEMs maybe uh, raise the price. It's not so good. Maybe they they feel they they, they need more control. Um, then it makes sense again to work maybe with an OEM and say, hey, I like this product, and maybe make this change, and maybe with this other material, this other color, um, and maybe you could. Um, also make it possible to do that other function so it's it's an existing product but since again you're going to develop it from scratch or, or close for close to scratch um, you, you you can make some adjustments right um, 
that that's why you 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 might make some adjustments to the to the product design um okay so the oem will do it again as i said before they might they might well do some of the engineering for free uh and so on which is why if you can get them interested with relatively high sales volume on that product um typically because you already confirm demand by reselling an oem product well that that will uh, motivate them okay an oem really m needs to be motivated right uh, very very important and then they can do some of the work for free but again work for free means um, if you need very high control it might not be ideal okay and that's where again you might need in to to go with a cm but uh, first let's finish with the oem so they need to be motivated it's really really important <clears throat> they um uh, so ip rights uh again question marks as i say that's that's an issue um might take longer to develop um so again very often people start with an odm that kind of makes sense and and if you see that you at the same time sales volume is very high and 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 you really want more control then it makes sense to redevelop the product again existing product but redevelop it make some changes um so that it's it, it is unique it is still the same um user needs that you're addressing uh the same challenges and so on but you, you need to make it to differentiate it enough so that if you started with an odm's product they cannot go back to you and say hey uh, what are you doing right so when you work with an odm or oem sorry you you develop it you make some adjustments same thing with the cm okay uh, with the cm again it's more clean because uh, you have much more control okay and um this this guy here the, the the oem will subsidize a little bit or a lot if they see that sales volume is high um here with the cm it's not subsidized right so um you pay for basically all the work and in exchange you own all the ip all right um provided that uh, the existing product was adjusted sufficiently of course all right um so i hope it makes sense um so when you do private labeling it's very often between these two here oem and odm that you need to to um you need to make a decision very often people start odm then maybe if really doesn't work nicely they go into oem and 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 with some adjustments to the product and if i go back here if it's a new product um well people who don't have experience with this might start with an odm um, people who have experience usually avoid um odm and the their real choice is between oem and cm okay and then it really depends on the expected volume expected volume it makes sense to to pay for everything and to own all the ip and then um which which provides for higher control okay well i hope that's useful let me know if you have any questions Thanks.